Hello, good good morning guys and happy new month. Today we are going to learn about nursing and ANC packages. My colleagues will introduce themselves. Good morning, my name is Tessa Elabu, a nurse from City Health Hospital. Morning, my name is Joyce Karaja, I'm also a nurse at City Health Hospital. And today we are talking about ANC in terms of pregnancy. So ANC is antinatal clinic. And today we want to, to showcase what we have when we talk about ANC here at City Health. So our first contact with our mother, we really have to make sure you're pregnant. So ANC is for pregnant mothers. And if you're not sure whether you're pregnant, we'll do a pregnancy test and then we can start from there. If we can also do an ultrasound, if that is what we, you would love us to do. So uh, the first contact with the mother, we start with the vitals. And with the vitals, we do the BPs, the temperatures, the weight. And then from then on, we now start on with the filling of this book. When we, when we give uh, a mother this book here, it tells us of, of, in short, we monitor the pregnancy up to term. So, we fill each and every part that needs to be filled up from the history to the time of pregnancy to the pregnancy she might have, she might have had, the babies maybe she has lost. They all have to, to come here so that we know the care we are going to give to our mothers. So, as we continue, we go filling each and every part of the visit that she comes anything that needs to be queried anything that needs more consultation we go to the next level to even get getting a gyna that is um, more advanced in 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 in, uh, in the issue of mother and child in terms of pregnancy so we will we'll start with uh, what we just said if we have a mother with us we start with the vitals first and we have our mother with us and we are going to start with just asking her how she has been and then we will continue from there so good morning good morning how are you i'm fine this is city health and we would love to start with you today and we start with and in pregnancy, blood pressure is very important because at some point uh, we have different mothers who come in and they start well with their BPs and they might go high during their pregnancy and that is a cause for alarm to even check lab, some lab tests to inquire if the mother might have a condition we call eclampsia or preeclampsia and that is why blood pressure is very important to a pregnant mother. So here we go. Our mother is very cooperative today. And just relax. So we are taking her blood pressure. She needs to relax and she is not supposed to talk. And we can wait. is done. Readings at 108.76. This is a normal blood pressure. If it would have gone 140.90 going up, that is a high blood pressure. And that one will not just say it is a high blood pressure on a first reading. We will still need to carry out some more, some more readings. We can even take a couple of weeks, one, two weeks. But we cannot leave our mother with a high blood pressure because now that she's pregnant, we have to intervene immediately to know the cause of the high blood pressure. But for us today, it's very normal. We go to the temperature. Now with COVID, we are being told we need to use masks. 
whenever we are and make sure we are doing sanitize, sanitizing our hands and cleaning our hands. So you need to check her temperature. 36.6. This is a normal temperature and our marker is fine. Then from there, we do the routines of a pregnant mother. We will ask her to lie on the porch and then we can we can see the maturity of our baby. We can also tell the position of the baby. But little babies below 16 weeks, we cannot say this is the head or this is the limbs, these are the limbs. But after 24 weeks, we can really tell the position, how the baby is lying. And uh, all, all, as, as we progress, we can even tell, okay, the, the term, as we get to term, we can tell even if that the baby is ready to be born by even just feeling, palpating, we call it palpating the tummy, and that is what we are going to do right now. By how far the baby goes on the tummy, you can tell the maturity. So if it's around the navel, the, 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 the umbilicus, that is a baby above 24 weeks. And you can see that true, we, true we have a baby there. And she has felt where the baby is, where the back is, where the back is. That is where you can feel now the fetal heart rate because the back is just behind the heart. So we are locating the fetal heart rate and in the unborn babies a fetal heart rate can go up to 160 that is a normal heart rate so you might feel like it's beating quite a lot but that is still okay and if it beats slowly we still need to intervene and know what is wrong with the baby through ultrasound and even getting history from the mother in case she had a trauma, maybe she is not feeling well, all this can contribute to the baby not having a normal fetal heart rate. And this is the reason they should really come for clinics to detect some of these things before it's too late. Sometimes we've heard of people saying that the baby just stopped breathing and okay, they, the baby died in the uterus, we call it, we call it intrauterine fetal death and this is one way to make sure that we don't get them because anytime a mother comes to clinic you're able to feel that fetal heart rate you're able to feel that baby even move when you're palpating the tummy and that really helps to make sure that our baby is alive and well so a mother after 16 weeks like her She's above 16 weeks, so she already has the first shot of tetanus, which takes place at 16 weeks. Then the for the first pregnancy, we go for two shots, the first at 16 weeks, then uh, a duration of four weeks, then come for the second shot. But any other pregnancy after the first pregnancy, we only give one shot after 16 weeks. And now that our mother here is for a first visit, there are tests to be done to make sure that our mother is healthy and so is the baby. So we have the ANC profile still in this book here. It will still indicate what to be done on that first visit. So we need to do a HB for this mother because if the HB is less than 10, that tells us that our mother might have issues in terms of anemia 
that is low blood lead health in the body and we need to improve on that so we put them on supplements the alphas the pregnant care they are quite a lot in the market now and you need as a mother we tell them to not stop when they start using them then you also need to do a brand group Okay, in terms of blood group, the mother may, might get trauma and will need a blood transfusion. So this really helps in an emergency so that when she goes to the hospital, there will be no much of taking more tests and we need that blood as well. So this will really help with in terms of the blood group. Now the results, for the mothers who are results negative, these are special mothers because when you have a results negative, especially O negative, that tells you, you we, need, we really need to put you on a, on a serious special follow-up that you're very careful not to even engage in, in places that you might end up in accidents or end up uh, in areas that can trigger us to even do transfusion for you because getting this blood of a recess negative mother is rare. And also, when it comes to pregnancy, if your partner is positive, blood group positive, and the mother is negative, there is a, a condition that the baby might get because of the change of the blood groups between the mother and the, uh, and the baby. If the mother is negative and the mother is positive, they, they, are, they tend to like get in kind of a war because the, 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 the blood group of the mother which is negative will perceive the blood group of the baby which is positive as a foreign body and then we might end up with an intrauterine fetal death. So this is very important when it comes to the races of the mother. The serology here part of it, we, talk, we are talking in terms of STIs, the, the specific one being syphilis, because syphilis in pregnancy is quite serious and you can get a baby with abnormalities, a baby with not, uh, not get, not, not um, a term baby. So we really need to check on the, on the serology. In terms of HIV, this is also very important so that we can take care of the baby in case the mother is reactive, reactive saying that she's positive. We need to put her on medication so that we'll make sure that the pregnancy is successful and we have a negative baby despite the mother being positive. Then we've talked about, this is the chart where we chart the times of the visits the mother comes. Anytime she comes, we chart it here. Anything that needs to be, to be consulted that we need to take to maybe a gyna, it will appear on this chart over here. And we encourage a mother, anytime she knows she's pregnant, she should come to the hospital so that we can really make sure that the pregnancy is successful. We also do a malaria test and uh, hepatitis B. These are, uh, I can say, conditions that can really bring a bad pregnancy experience and you might never wish to be pregnant again, but these also are the things to help us make sure that our mother is safe. Also for blood sugar, we will do an, a random blood sugar test. This one is to, okay, we know there are conditions that can trigger a, a pregnancy not to be successful, like diabetes, hypertension, and also checking the random blood sugar. That is very good because we will know is the blood sugar of the mother normal? If not, why? And that one will lead us to doing more tests so that we make sure our mother is safe and the baby that we will have will also be safe. So anything that needs to be, to be done or uh, anything that needs to be clarified still should be appear on this book, on the notes. Anything that you do on this mother should always come on this book. Whatever it is, so long as she's in the hospital, it should appear in this book and it has places to show the notes that you have put down. And also in terms of the pregnant mothers, there are things that we tell the mother to check so that she might come back to the hospital, not to wait for the day that she's supposed to show up. Like if she spots bleeding, 
there is pain on the lower abdomen, the, 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 the uterus, if there is bleeding, the spleen should come. If there is this headache, serious headache, like the frontal headache, she can't even control it with painkillers, she should come to the hospital. In case she has had a fall, she should come to the hospital. In case also maybe she has this loss of appetite, she can't put anything, a lot of vomiting. You know, they start, the first trimester is quite serious with um, the loss of appetite and vomiting, but there's the excess part of it that you can't retain anything. You need to come to the hospital because this is a condition in pregnancy that really needs to be to be sorted out. In case also maybe you the baby is not playing, maybe the baby has this the stage that the baby starts playing from 16 weeks going henceforth, and you realize the baby is not playing, you should come to the hospital. If you also feel like uh, okay, you have issues with your breathing too, especially for mothers even with respiratory conditions. You should really come to the hospital if you feel like like asthmatic markers. You should come back to the hospital if you have issues with your breathing because that will really affect our baby. Okay, we get to a point of doing an ultrasound, especially when we are almost getting to term. An ultrasound is very important. This one will help us to see if our baby is in the right position. This one will tell us in terms of the cord. There is a time the baby has a cord around the neck and sometimes we, it may form knots. We call them, we have true knots and false knots. So if we have a true knot, that tells us that when the baby was turning, the baby coiled himself or herself around the cord and made a knot. And with the ultrasound, that can really help us in terms of making sure the baby is safe. Because once we have that knot, the baby is not able to get the supplies from the mother in terms of uh, oxygen, in terms of nutrients, and that will really help us. An ultrasound is also important in case of a fall. We will see if our baby was hurt. We can also tell if, if, the, if the placenta, we all know as mothers, we have the placenta where the baby attaches to the mother. And if we had a fall and started detaching, that can be quite serious because you can lose both the mother and the baby because of the bleeding and that will the ultrasound will really help us on that also the, the the attachment of the placenta is important because okay there is a the way we say the placenta should be attached on the uterus and if it is away away from uh, from from the fundus we call it the fundus of the uterus the upper part of the uterus that is where we recommend we 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 we, we say the the, the placenta should attach well. If the placenta is down here uh, around around the the cervix, that is quite a serious case. And most of the mothers are said are told to have total bed rest because there is a high chance of that placenta detaching if it is on the lower segment of the uterus, and that is. Very, that is why it's very important to have an ultrasound you know, at least once in the, in, the, in the term of your pregnancy so that we can actually roll out all this to make sure that our baby is safe. So with all that much said and the much we have done to see what happens here at City Health, we welcome all of you. We are open Monday to Sunday and you can just come in and and how make us help you because we are here for all of you and we all love you because that is our passion, that is our profession and we want to have healthy babies. Africa is being known to have quite a high mortality of babies and we want to really stop that and that is for me and you. So Karibuni Sana, Karibuni City Health.